Hi, this is Julie from Love's Beginning with a message called Beingness is One. Someone's wrong, bad, and guilty. This is the virus. If you ever feel any physical or emotional discomfort, this idea is the cause. Someone or something is bad. Someone or something is guilty. Someone. A being perceived as separate, while beingness is one. This is the only sickness the only problem. Isn't it nice that you can only have one problem? That simplifies things nicely. Some thing, an aspect perceived as separate. Ego tells you that these separate aspects can threaten you or bring you joy, believing these thoughts as the cause of all suffering. When you believe one thought about someone or something being bad, wrong, or guilty, you begin to believe a lot more thoughts of the same nature. This explains the world that you are projecting with thought. As you realize that egoic thoughts aren't true, the world loses its purpose as that which hides joy. Instead, it becomes a reflector of joy. When egoic thoughts are believed, they gain seeming strength. Certain egoic thoughts are repeated over and over and over again, like the idea that all beings are separate bodies, and all bodies are subject to the separate aspects of a world. These beliefs make your experience. If all is one, but you are busy gazing upon an illusion of being separate, can you see how ridiculous it is to believe that one of you is bad? Think of this. You are alone in a room. Someone walks into that room and says this to you. One of you is very, very good, and the other one is very, very bad. So which is which? There is only one of you. You cannot peel off from yourself and be something that the rest of you is not. Only in an illusion is the experience of this possible. If you are believing that any body is guilty, then you are believing a whole stack of egoic thoughts, and it can all be undone now. First of all, you are believing that beings are bodies. Better to remember that you are projecting a world in which everything appears to be separate. All the bodies represent a being at war with itself. But when you decide to put time and space under the control of the oneness, all aspects of the world join to reflect back a harmony and peace that is entirely real. When you don't need the reflection anymore, the physical passes away because it becomes clear that it was never needed. If you become aware that you are fully in joy right now, it becomes apparent that what you used to block joy was never needed and so you let it go. When the world reflects back very clearly to you that you and all are joy itself, then you also become aware that there was never any need for time and space, and they pass away in peace. You use the illusions of time and space to block out light and joy. You make the experience of time and space using thought. What you made, you can turn it over to the oneness to handle. You are learning to stop trying to control time and space, to allow the oneness to run everything. Can a ball of light harm another ball of gentle light? This is our best representation of what you actually are under the fantasy of physicality. Of course, you are not separate balls at all, but this is one way to point you in the direction of what you are. When you are looking at what you are, ego's thoughts become meaningless. Ego's beliefs are seen as entirely unhelpful. If all beings are as pure and gentle as balls of light, how do you find yourself in this very distracting drama of many beings flawed in many different and specific ways? You are fantasizing. Your fantasy seems very real to you. You used your fantasy as a defense against the light, and you have never needed to defend against the light. The light is what you are, and it is equally what your divine siblings are. No exceptions. If you agree to be shown how it really is, your egoic belief structure must collapse. You are perfectly safe in its collapse, because it is only the collapse of an illusion, of nothingness. You are always entirely secure and held in love, no matter what illusion seems to show you. Look at ego practically. It is not a creature. It does not want anything, although it sends you messages about wants. 
It is an invention, your own invention, that you have been relying upon. It simply sends you thoughts, and thoughts cause the physical experience. It sends those thoughts at your request. As you stop relying upon ego, relying instead upon the ever-present light, the volume on egoic thought is turned down. When you do hear an egoic thought, you recognize it's meaningless, it's basis in fantasy. When you meet another being in thought or in the physical, you become more and more willing to just see them as they are, right now. As you become more and more willing to forget every thought the ego has sent you about every being who seems to be other, you drop into peace, and from that peace you can see very clearly all of your beautiful and innocent divine siblings. Your fantasy is entirely reliant on believing that the ones perceived as others are bodies. If you think that you are someone other than someone perceived as else, you believe you are a body too. Question the belief in bodies and otherness and you allow light to do its work through you. Turn the body over to what is helping you to learn and unlearn now. Turn all perceived bodies over to what is helping you to learn and unlearn now. Turn all sense of burden and control over to this oneness and allow yourself to be carried by the peace you have always been, the love that all your divine siblings can reflect back to you. We come to you from this ocean of peace, this current of calm, and we see very clearly that you are held in perfect oneness always. Thanks for listening.